Hello, I'm Jacob Kruger, and this is the Write Your Screenplay Podcast. This week, we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving. But we're not just going to be talking about turkeys and football. We're going to be talking about series. You see, everything you need to know to write a series, you can learn at Thanksgiving. So I'm going to encourage you just for a moment to think back to your very first Thanksgiving. Don't think about the way it was supposed to be. Think about the way it was. Maybe your first Thanksgiving or the first Thanksgiving you remember was a wonderful experience filled with beauty and connection and laughter and love. Maybe the first Thanksgiving you remember was a terrifying experience filled with stress and anxiety and people misbehaving and family not getting along and tearing each other apart. But if you're like most people, probably your first Thanksgiving was a really complicated mixture of beauty and drama, pressure and tension and joy and laughter and love and all the things that go into family. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, you could substitute any holiday that mattered to you where your family gathered together. And you probably realize that there are certain rituals that tend to happen in this genre of holiday, right? So if we're doing Thanksgiving, you know, you're going to eat way too much food. You're going to talk about tryptophan as if it was something that you just discovered just now. You're probably going to retire to watch football. Or if you're not a football family, maybe you're going to sit around and play board games or just chat. You're going to eat earlier than you're used to. You're going to cook more food than anybody should. You're going to wake up at two in the morning and make a stuffing sandwich, right? There are certain things that tend to be part of almost everybody's Thanksgiving, just like the genre of a show, right? If you're writing an action show, there are going to be a bunch of action sequences. It's just going to happen, right? If you're writing a drama, there's going to be tears, right? And there's going to be pressure and there's going to be hard decisions. If you're writing a comedy, there are going to be jokes. If you're writing a thriller, there are going to be thrills. If you're writing a horror show, there's going to be blood and gore. And if you're writing elevated horror, there's going to be a spiritual transcendent level to it, right? There are certain kinds of plot things that are going to happen at a specific holiday, just like in the genre of any show. But you start to realize that if you really think back to your first Thanksgiving, or if you think back to every Thanksgiving that followed, in which you either tried to replicate or change that first feeling that you had. You'll start to realize that it wasn't the genre that made Thanksgiving Thanksgiving. It was the characters. And in the same way, when you are building your own show, it is not the plot of your show or the genre of your show that keeps people coming back show after show after show, episode after episode after episode, season after season after season, year after year after year. It is not the genre element and it is not the plot. It's not the things that you do that tend to be kind of necessary for your show. And it's not even like the odd things that you do, even though those things are lovely. For example, uh, a family friend, uh, their family always sings the turkey dinner song every Thanksgiving. They started it when they were children and they still sing it. And now we sing it too because it's funny. But even that is not why Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving because my family, every year, my brother-in-law, Dan, says, are we ready to sing the turkey dinner song? Um, it, Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving because of the joy I get 
watching Dan make us all sing turkey dinner. It's because of the joy that Dan has in ironically singing this silly turkey dinner song. So this is what's really fun, right? It's not the plot that makes your TV series. It's the characters. Now, this is true in feature films as well, and in books and in plays. It's always the characters. It's always the characters that we're actually connecting to, even though, hey, we got to move through, through certain rituals, right? If you're writing a spy thriller, there had better be spies. And if you are writing a turkey dinner, there better be turkey, right? Or tofurkey, right? Or a turducken, right? Or some kind of family feast, right? So, yes, there are certain plot elements that are necessary and important. But it's not the plot elements that make the show. It's not the plot elements that make the movie. It's always the characters. Where feature films and series start to diverge is that if you're writing a feature film, you're not looking for every Thanksgiving. In fact, you're usually looking for exactly the opposite. You're looking for the Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving where everything changed. The Thanksgiving where I finally put my foot down. Or the Thanksgiving where I finally agreed to do what they've always asked me to do. The Thanksgiving where we had the big family blowout. Or the Thanksgiving where we finally came together and recognized how much we all loved each other, right? We're always looking for the Thanksgiving of change, right? The big, hot Thanksgiving, the best Thanksgiving, the worst Thanksgiving, right? And particularly, we're looking for the Thanksgiving that is pivotal in the main character's lives, right? We're looking for, if you're the main character of your Thanksgiving, we're looking for that pivotal Thanksgiving after which no Thanksgiving will ever be the same that will give meaning to all the thanksgivings that came before. We're looking for those points of change. And this captures a truth about us, about us as human beings, which is that every single human being in the world longs to change. We have this thing in us called the nascent ego, right? That wants to change, that wants to know more. And the nascent ego doesn't really care very much if more is happy or sad. It just wants to know. It just wants to expand. It just wants to test the limits of who you can be. The nascent ego, the part of you that wants to change, is neither good nor bad. It's just part of who you are as a human being, part of who we all are. We all want to expand ourselves. We all want to change. We all long for something better. We all long to step out of normal. We buy a brand new car and it's the coolest car ever and then it becomes our car and we want a new car. That's the nascent ego. Or we show up for the job at the 7-Eleven or the accounting firm or the law office or the production office or whatever day job we have. And then one day we say, no, I long for something more, right? This is the nascent ego. This is the part of us that wants to change. And the, the feature films tend to capture us at that moment of nascent ego taking over, right? That moment where we're going to go change and this is true. We do change. Think about who you were at your first Thanksgiving. You're not the same person now. And why are you not the same person now? Because you made big choices. Some of them might have been beautiful choices. Some of them might have been tragic choices. But you made huge choices. And those choices sent you on a journey of change. And you went on the journey of change because you wanted things. Because obstacles came in your way between you and the want and those choices led you to become who you are today. Just like the next choices you make will lead you to become the person that you are tomorrow. So feature films capture that journey of change. They capture those pivotal times in our lives. Series. Series work 
differently. Series still capture change, but they also capture another part of us, part called the holdfast ego. They capture the part of us that wants to stay the same. They capture the part of us that wants every Thanksgiving to be like that first Thanksgiving. So the nascent ego has that first Thanksgiving and goes, next year, maybe we could have two turkeys. Next year, maybe we could decorate the house. Next year, maybe we could have even more family over. Next year, right? The nascent ego wants it to change. A holdfast ego wants Thanksgiving next year to feel exactly like Thanksgiving this year. It wants Thanksgiving to feel the same every single time. Even as we change, even as we grow older, right? We still want that feeling that we had as a child. That's what we are chasing. And so we show up and we do these rituals together. And some of them are beautiful rituals and some of them are destructive rituals. But we do these rituals together. We come together with family members that we see all the time and family members that we don't see enough. And we come together because we are all chasing a feeling. And sometimes we get the feeling and sometimes we don't get the feeling. But that's why we're coming. We're coming for the feeling. And there is an infrastructure to it, right? There's a certain series of rituals that you do. But inside that infrastructure, what we're really going for is the feeling of these characters, right? These characters coming together in a way each year that is both the same, but also different. Now, don't get me wrong. Feature films also deal with the holdfast ego. In fact, you can think of your job as a writer is simply to activate the nascent ego and then punish <laughs> the character for changing so that their holdfast ego takes over and then their nascent ego. But the difference is, the difference is, whereas feature films tend to build to climax and catharsis, right? Um, feature films tend to build to this feeling that life is going to go on either happily ever after or sadly ever after. But TV is different. What TV does is TV denies catharsis, maybe until the final episode. The pilot of a series is just like a feature, right? It's going to capture that amazing Thanksgiving or that horrible Thanksgiving, right? It's going to capture that first Thanksgiving that says, this is what Thanksgiving feels like, that sets the expectation and that sucks you into the world, that goes, hey, here are the characters. Here's this tremendous journey of change. Here's this tremendous problem that they're dealing with. If you're looking at succession, the series goes, Here's these characters, and look, the great lion is falling, and these cubs are going to tear each other apart trying to get the crown. If you're writing Curb Your Enthusiasm, you're writing, here's this guy named Larry David who just can't do the things that everybody else can do out of common courtesy. But what's actually happening is we're just meeting characters. And here's his friend, Jeff, his agent, his best friend in the world. Jeff thinks every idea Larry has is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Agrees with everything. And he's a total philanderer. And his wife? She hates Larry with every bone in her body, but somehow always ends up engaging with him. And Larry's wonderful wife is just a lovely person who kind of is going to put up with all of Larry's craziness again and again. And it's like Thanksgiving and we go, oh, I get it. I get how it works. And we're going to watch Larry get put in a position where he should be able to apologize but can't. And things are going to get worse and worse and worse until we feel real shame for Larry. 
until we start to redden and start to feel like we just can't watch. But we're also laughing. So this is Thanksgiving. The pilot is like the special Thanksgiving. And what the pilot does is it creates a craving in us to get together with these people again in all their beauty and all their horror. To get together with these people again and have an experience like that again, which is to say the characters in a series become our family. There's a reason that every series focuses around a family. I believe it's because they become our extended family. We invite them into our living rooms as part of our ritual, whether it's a binging ritual or a once a week on Sundays at 9 p.m. ritual. We invite them into our homes as part of our ritual and they become part of our family and our expectation, just like at Thanksgiving, you want mom to act like mom. You want dad to act like dad and you want your crazy cousin to act like your crazy cousin. And even if a part of you hopes it, wouldn't it be nice if dad was different? And wouldn't it be nice if mom was different? And wouldn't it be nice if my crazy cousin was different? There's also a part of you that if they were different, Thanksgiving wouldn't feel like Thanksgiving anymore. What series do so beautifully is they capture the holdfast part of us, right? They capture the cycles in us. And series can evolve and change, and characters inside of series can evolve and change. They don't have to stay who they were. Just like we can evolve and change. We don't have to stay who we were. You are not the same person you were at your very first Thanksgiving. And I would guess that also the rituals of your Thanksgiving have changed. I would guess some of the people who were at your first Thanksgiving are probably no longer with us. And I would guess that some of the people who were not at your first Thanksgiving, who you didn't even know, are now a core part of what Thanksgiving is. I would guess that every single person in your family has both changed and also failed to change, has both broken out of old patterns and reenacted old patterns over time. And this is what series is about and this is what engine is about. It's not about the plot that happens to happen. It's about how can this Thanksgiving feel like all the previous Thanksgiving, but also feel different? How can we get different plot year after year, episode after episode, season after season? How can different kinds of things happen, but mom still feel like mom, even if she's changing, and dad feel, still feel like dad, even if he's changing? And crazy cousins still feel like crazy cousin, even if they're changing. And this is what I find beautiful about series. Series tell us a different kind of truth than feature films. And it's not that they're any more or less true, but feature films tell us the happy ever after and sadly ever after stories. But TV, series have the ability to tell us a different kind of story and one that actually looks more like our lives. These incredibly complicated series about how we both change and also stay the same. How we evolve, but also enact the same old patterns. How Thanksgiving stays Thanksgiving, even as we grow and change. And where does this feeling come from? This feeling comes from characters. This feeling comes from beautiful and broken people, flawed and wonderful people, transcendent and falling people. Beautiful, messy people. That is what series are built of. And that's what engine is built of. When you're building the engine of your series, all you have to do is think of Thanksgiving dinner. Think about capturing that feeling of that first Thanksgiving. And then think about how do the characters show up as themselves 
episode after episode after episode. How do they enact the same patterns even as they change? And when those patterns get broken, how does Thanksgiving still feel like Thanksgiving? How does each episode of the series still feel like the pilot? That is your engine. So as you head into your Thanksgiving, I wish you the gift of both changing and failing to change. I wish you the gift of both nascent and holdfast ego. I wish you the gift of enjoying the engine that brings your family together, not necessarily in a perfect way, but in a beautiful way. And I hope that your Thanksgiving is filled with inspiration. Enjoying this podcast? We'll get some more for free. We're having our second annual Pitch Festivus event on Thursday, December 9th. It's seven to nine Eastern, four to seven Pacific. Top faculty members at Jacob Kruger Studio and myself, we're gonna be sharing some of our best insights about pitching. You will have a chance to be selected for a chance to pitch. You can win some amazing prizes, connect with our community. It's gonna be awesome. You can find out more or RSVP at writeyourscreenplay.com slash Festivus.